Hey everyone, and this is Colonel Mustard with the Seattle on Sea of Fortune. Sorry, I couldn't help it. So many replay breakdowns, and uh, I haven't used that joke yet. Uh, anyway, so in the replay breakdowns, as always, we're going to pause the game periodically to discuss things, and we're going to do our first one by looking at the enemy team lineup. So they have... Actually, their battleship spread isn't terribly frightening to the Seattle. I mean, really anything that can overmatch your bow can really mess you up, so I will be avoiding them. Cruisers could be a problem. I mean, everything is kind of a problem with the Seattle. I mean, it's not a bad ship, but it is a challenging one to play. And looking at this lineup, like, if the same battleships were on the enemy team that are on our team, like, the North Carolina is the biggest threat to me. Uh, the Lion is an HE spammer, and it's really, it's almost as sneaky as I am, so it makes it kind of tough but uh generally speaking i got a center spawn so there's a generally a position for cruisers like this that i like to go to and it's right uh behind the island at uh well at e6 and it's generally a good position and you're going to be seeing in atlanta trying to go to the same position as me as well so there's a lot that what I like about that position is there's other islands around that I could use to maybe disengage as long as I manage and I have a radar, which is huge because if I radar and just decide not to shoot, once that DD's outside of that, then I can reposition. And this game's all kind of about repositioning. So I pick my initial position and I'm heading there. If I get spotted, because I have radar that's almost equal to, or actually it is equal to my spotting range, to where I get spotted, I know I'd, I'll just pop it and see what's seeing me. If I, I don't really want to use that before I get to B, which is why I'm having my guns ready, in case I have to, in which case I'll hug the crap out of that island, but that's not quite going to happen. I'm a little confused on where this Fletcher's going. I'm watching him on my mini-map, and I'm not sure what his goal is. Diving into B too early be, when you don't know where stuff is, especially with the amount of radar spam that's going on now, is a uh, is not a good idea. I see an NC and a Turpitz. Okay, that's fine. Let's get some more information before I dedicate on anything. And that's what you want to be patient in the Seattle. That's the biggest thing. Like you really can't force anything in any of these American light cruisers. You have to see what the enemy gives you and then punish them for mistakes or mispositioning. And that's what you're, that's, that's your goal. If you're being a pain in the ass to the enemy. Now these shots coming in, I'm wondering if they're just blind firing, but those were pretty accurate. And okay, the Atlanta is being spotted. So what I'm, okay, so I'm going to pause it. What I'm doing here, this Atlanta is spotted. He is not as sneaky as my ship, even though I'm like twice his size. Not important. I know he's being spotted by the DD at sea. So I'm moving into position right now to spot him. To spot the DD. To make him turn out to maybe help this Atlanta out. And that's my goal. He blew his engine. I'm going to be accelerating and I'm going to be looking for this DD. I'm not even spotted, but I know because of the difference in our concealment that I should be spotting him soon. And boom, we get a spot. This hide is going to throttle jockey the crap out of me. And I'm going to, uh, I don't even think I get a hit here. I think this, this is like my, my eighth or ninth game in this thing, and I'm still getting used to the gun handling as far as DDs are concerned. Uh, as far as this ship, it's uh, not really a uh, clone ship of the, of the Cleveland before it, and... You get a heal and a better radar and a better height. Like, you get better consumables, but the problem is is that it, it has it has this compound issue of not having very good maneuverability, not having good un gun angles. And when you have this kind of fire rate, you want at least one of those things to be in your favor. And this thing doesn't quite have it. So that's what makes this thing a challenging ship to play, especially if you're forced in the open water. And I'm really just trying to stick to islands. There's a ton in this game, so... It's not something I want to miss out on using. We now uh, I want to pause here. All three of our DDs went toward A. So we, even though like the bulk of our team is at C, 
we really don't have DD support, and the bulk of our battleships, we have three battleships in the same position, are behind the same island. And that might be good enough to own that, that Indianapolis, but he's not a huge threat to our team. And battleships really need to start learning to spread out a bit more, because that blob, unless one person makes a really dumb mistake, they'll kill one guy out of it. Anyone else? I mean, that's a, if I was uh, Fletcher that's heading to B right now, or at least was last spotted going to be, that's my torp target, hands down, every day. You'll get plenty of hits. So right now, I'm setting up to deal with this line, and I'm starting to understand that I can farm damage a bit in this position, but I am going to have to relocate, and I intend on doing that and not, not very soon, very soon. And what I'm kind of worried about, it's going to take us too long to get A, and this group that's at C is going to end up pushing out this King George in Massachusetts. And they're going to get our ship's flank before we can get a remotely a discernible, usable position on A. B is being capped. We have a radar ship right there, which is rough, but I'm not going to focus too much on my team's play. Now, this St. Louis comes up behind me. And this is when I absolutely go, okay, I have to stop firing and I have to relocate. I'm in a crossfire. And I don't really have support. So it's now it's time to relocate. Now that I've got my ship moving, I know I can maneuver a decent amount. And if I have to stop firing, I can. So I'm going to try to get some damage on this North Cal who's making... Well, actually, he really isn't making a... Ma I mean, he probably made massive mistakes earlier, which is why his health's so low. But there's really nothing that can punish that broadside. We lose our Massachusetts. Unfortunate. And then I see the St. Louis. Okay, good. He's not pushing in. That's the big thing. If he was pushing in, I'd have to maybe change my position. Haida, or Haida is probably spotting me. So I'm going to have to stop firing very soon. And so I do a quick little juke because I got three people targeting me. I see the torps. I've already continued this turn, so I'm just going to wrap myself around these torps. Got my guns ready. I see a Fletcher. And uh, this might be the game of kill steals. Because very low health. I only need two hits. Boom, I get them. Kraken really isn't on my mind right now. The thing on my mind is trying to get us in a position to win this game. Because our battleships are still in that same position. They haven't advanced. They haven't repositioned in a way. We have really no crossfires to speak of. And I'm concerned that if this goes on for too long, that something bad's going to happen. So my resolution, Cat B. Now I'm shooting at this Haida. I'm staggering my shots to because he's been throttle jockeying me so hard. And I'm having a very hard... When you have this uh, seven seconds uh, lead at that short of range, it makes it really difficult to uh, accurately land shots on DDs. Especially when they're throttle jockeying with engine boost. makes it difficult. So now, my entire attention is on the St. Louis. And I want to I want to take him out like King Joffrey. We just got to kill this bitch. Because we really can't let him survive. The Mahan's going to make quite a big mistake. He drops his uh, smoke. He might be in hydro. He's not in hydro range. But he's sure as hell going to make sure he gets in hydro range. If there is there. He, he should be slowing down and just sitting in his smoke. But between the Atlanta, me, and this Mayhan shooting this guy, we're going to kill this guy for sure. Thankfully, the uh, enemy team, our battleships have finally split off on that side. Not really creating a crossfire, but we're getting some work done. I'm in a really good position. I can't be spotted. So I'm just going to farm some damage if I can on this Turpitz who's burning. Get damage where I can. And I'm bracing myself for the uh, the push from the Chape of King George, Colorado Lion, and uh, Haida toward B. We have finally acquired it. We only have one DD left. And it's he's a Fletcher on the flanks. I essentially steal another kill. Although in World of Warships, no such thing as kill stealing. 
I was mainly supportive fire. I didn't honestly think I was going to be at four kills at this point. So now I am kind of cracking hunting. I'm like, all right, well, I snaked four kills. Let's see what we can do. And what I want to do is farm this lion. Not really looking to kill him, but I want... The only person on the enemy team who or on our team that it pretty much realizes that B is the key point here is uh, my ally, and I told him to come back. I also told him to go high uh, so that he had room to maneuver and stuff, but he's going to do what he wants. It's random battles, after all. And so he's going to come and try to give me some spots so I can support him. Gonna just try and see if I can get some extra cheeky damage on this chop av. Our Atlanta is pushing into five ships right now. As an Atlanta, which is super dependent on your allies helping you. This probably won't end well for him. I actually don't I have watched this replay before, but I haven't uh, super into it. Now that the lion's redetected, he's the biggest threat to my team. He could probably repair almost all the damage I'm going to do to him back, but that's going to force a repair. So he's my primary target since I'm not really getting the damage I want on the Chephaev. At this point, I'm just going to keep trying to farm. As long as I stay undetected, I'm okay. And this is kind of like what you want to be doing in these American cruisers. Put yourself in a position just to be a pain in the ass. That's your job. You want to just... Use islands, become a pain in the ass, and you're playing the ship well. You'll have some of those games where you get a crap ton of damage and some of those games where you just get okay damage. That's fine. Be a pain in the ass. That's your goal. Now, uh, my uh, division mate is uh, YOLO Torping, is what he's doing, in case you're wondering. Not optimal, but if it if he can get some tour pits, we can whittle down the stand, which is why I'm being very stingy in leaving this position. I want to make sure that if they repair any of my fires, and now I'm going to look at the King George, because he said that's his torp target. So I'm going to see if I can get him to blow a repair too early. Maybe get a permanent flooding, help my ally out. I can't shoot the Colorado. He he is torping the Colorado as well. Any torps he can get. Now, this King George isn't wearing camo, which usually tells you, especially when you're in the mid-tiers, you're not wearing camo. That fire was a little late. But it uh, looks like he's going to get a few torpits. And now i got a, hi a Haida in front of me. I don't know why I always want to mispronounce that. Hi Haida's torps aren't particularly fast. I do run the acceleration mod on my Seattle, so I know I can get around this. If I didn't, I would have just turned nose in. I've dodged enough torps in this thing. So now I'm kind of waiting for him to make himself a, a target. It's either go for me, it's either back up in front of me or charge in, or let the Baltimore kill him. Either way works for me. Now I'm going to keep checking him to see if he backs up, but this Baltimore has got this kill. He's already blew his single torp. He only has one torp launcher, and I know this. Baltimore, I don't think, was paying attention to see that uh, that's what happened. And I'm still detected. Which means... And I know where all the enemy ships are. The Chapev is moving in. So I'm waiting for him to make himself a... Uh, a waiting for him to reveal himself. There he is. Okay, now it's time to pay attention to him after I get, you know, one more volley on him. Why not? And I'm going to do the same thing to this Chapev that the, Hi the Haida did to me. I'm going to throttle jockey the crap out of him. I clear my barrels because I don't have expert loader. He's still giving me broadside, and at this point, uh, this game is quickly turning into the Red Wedding, for sure. And he's he, he's, go, he's he's getting naked in front of me. He's g giving broadside, same as being naked. You're very vulnerable. And four Citadels. I'm going to see if I can maybe clear him with that last set. But he's turning out. So... At the, the chap I have has such weak armor that it's you get a little bit of an extension on your AP viability range with the Seattle. And he's getting okay chunks, you know, bless his soul. And I'm like, ah, I just want to finish him off. I'm close to a crack and let's let's just keep the HE spam. He's low enough. Even if he gives me broadside, I'm just gonna stick with HE for now on because he's so low and HE is more consistent damage. I get a fire. 
And I think I think that's gonna I think that's gonna stick. Get behind an island, so I really don't have to throttle jockey him as much. But I've been throttle jockeying. Anytime he shoots behind me, I uh, I back up. Anytime he shoots in front of me, I slow down. That's the idea behind throttle jockeying, just to let you know. So I get my Kraken. And at this point, the game's pretty much over. The uh, Colorado and Lion are being essentially pursued by three battleships. There's not much of a chance of them surviving this. So I'm going to self-promote. <laughs> <laughs> if you like the video, give it a like. If you want to see more content like this or even some more of my unique content, feel free to subscribe. If uh, you're feeling very generous, I do have a PayPal and Patreon. Your pick on what you like to donate to. If you don't want to donate, it's fine. just makes me a little sad. I am working to getting a uh, new computer, um, and I need 1700 to do it. And this will be enough to really speed up my development process. That's my goal. Uh, once I hit that, I'm going to buy all the parts and I'm going to build it. And then uh, I think that's it on self-promotion. So I'm done shamelessly self-promoting. Uh, like and subscribe is, is super helpful. Or if you want to share it, that works too. I don't have an end game, uh, uh, an end game uh, screen on this. I kind of just pay, I went through my Seattle games and I was like, this one shows kind of how to play it. Different ways to... You know, and I like this one because I, I had an initial plan and I had to scrap it because of what my team was doing and come up with a different plan to make an impact. So I didn't get a ton of damage. The Kraken, yeah, that's gravy on the cake, but I hope you guys have a good day and I hope you enjoyed it.